To draw the median nerve, divide the page into nerve roots and brachial plexus, upper arm, forearm, and hand. At the left hand side of the page, underneath the brachial plexus segment, indicate that the lateral cord nerve roots are C6 and C7, which are mostly sensory, and that the medial cord roots are C8 and T1, which are mostly motor. Next, continue the line through the upper arm to the forearm. The median nerve does not innervate any of the muscles of the upper arm or provide any of its sensory coverage. Now draw the anterior interosseous nerve branch. Show it innervates the deep forearm muscle group derived from roots C7 to T1, which comprises flexor pollicis longus, pronator quadratus, and flexor digitorum profundus 2 and 3. To demonstrate the action of flexor pollicis longus, flex the distal interphalangeal joint of your thumb. It is the long flexor of the thumb in that it passes the metacarpal phalangeal joint to flex the interphalangeal joint. Then demonstrate that you use pronator quadratus to pronate your forearm with your elbow in flexion. The last muscle of this group, flexor digitorum profundus 2 and 3, flexes the distal interphalangeal joints of the second and third digits. Now complete the path of the median nerve through the forearm and label the superficial forearm muscle group, derived from roots C6 and C7. It comprises flexor carpi radialis, pronator teres, palmaris longus, and flexor digitorum superficialis. Flex your wrist in a radial direction to demonstrate the action of flexor carpi radialis. To demonstrate the action of pronator teres, extend your forearm at the elbow and pronate it against resistance. Lastly, flex digits 2 through 5 at their proximal interphalangeal joints to demonstrate the role of flexor digitorum superficialis. Note, although the median nerve supplies only the second and third distal interphalangeal flexors, and the ulnar nerve supplies the fourth and fifth, the median nerve supplies all of the digit's proximal interphalangeal flexors. Next, draw the palmar cutaneous sensory nerve branch and then show the extension of the median nerve through the carpal tunnel into the hand. Because the takeoff of the palmar cutaneous nerve branch is proximal to the carpal tunnel, it is unaffected in carpal tunnel syndrome. Now show the recurrent motor branch of the thumb. It supplies the median innervated thenar group, derived from roots C8 and T1. It comprises abductor pollicis brevis, opponens pollicis, and flexor pollicis brevis. To demonstrate the action of abductor pollicis brevis, raise your thumb toward the ceiling. Abductor pollicis brevis provides thumb abduction perpendicular to the plane of the palm. We will use this muscle as part of the triad up, in, out, which, as we will learn, are the actions of the median, ulnar, and radial nerves on the thumb. Now stretch your thumb across your palm and touch the tip of your little finger to demonstrate opponent's pollicis. The median nerve provides thumb opposition and the ulnar nerve provides opposition of the little finger. To demonstrate the action of flexor pollicis brevis, which provides flexion of the thumb at the metacarpal phalangeal joint, flex your thumb across your palm. Note, the muscle length is shorter, more brief than that of flexor pollicis longus, which acts at the more distal interphalangeal joint. The most distal median nerve group is the terminal motor group, which comprises the first and second lumbricals. To demonstrate their actions, Extend the proximal interphalangeal joints of your index and middle fingers while you flex their metacarpal phalangeal joints. We have now completed the diagram for motor innervation of the median nerve. Next, let's draw its sensory coverage. On a separate sheet of paper, trace both sides of your hand. On the palm up tracing, square off the ball of the thumb to indicate the sensory coverage of the palmar cutaneous nerve which is unaffected in carpal tunnel syndrome. Then draw a line down the fourth digit and continue it to the wrist to show that the median nerve covers the lateral half of the ring finger, middle and index fingers, and the thumb. 
On the palm down tracing, show that the median sensory coverage extends to the dorsal tips of the thumb, index and middle fingers, and lateral half of the ring finger. This completes our drawing of the median nerve.